Welcome to Tissel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro creating buffers. In this video, I will discuss what is a buffer, what are the different parameters in the tool, and how it is used in different ways in ArcGIS Pro for cartographic modeling. A buffer zone is an area that is within a given distance from a map feature. When you buffer on a set of features, the output is a set of polygons. The buffering tool allows you to draw circular buffers around points or rectangular buffers on either side of lines or around the outside of polygons. The buffers are created as new shapefiles or feature classes in the project geodatabase. This makes it easier to identify, count or otherwise analyze other features that fall within the specified distance of the point, line or polygon features. In this exercise, we will discuss different buffering options with simple points, lines and polygon features. We will start with the buffer tool and these lines are our inputs. Inside the tool, we will go with 500 meter distance. Under site type, we are choosing full as we want buffer on both sides. The available options are full, left or right. If you want buffer only one side for the lines, you can choose appropriately. Next, under end type, the options are round or flat. Depending on whether you want rounded or flat squarish end of your buffer polygons at the end point, you can choose it. We will go with round. Now the method is a very important parameter here. Planner is the default option. This option will automatically determine which method to use based on the coordinate system of the input. Geodesic buffer accounts for the actual shape of the art. An ellipsoid or more properly a geoid. Distances are calculated between two points on a curved surface as opposed to two points on a flat surface. Geodesic creates a shape preserving geodesic buffer regardless of the input coordinate system. We are going with the default planner method here. We will try both no dissolve and dissolve all output option. Here are the results and their attribute tables. Both the dissolve and no dissolve looks very similar on the map. However, if you look at the attribute tables of dissolve, there is only one polygon here. Whereas in no dissolve attribute table, we have multiple polygon for each of these rows. For our next example, we will use these points as our inputs. Imagine you have some features and you need to create buffering polygons around each of them with varying buffer distances. In the attribute table of these points, the radius field indicates the varying buffer distances that you need around each point. You will also need a field with text data type like this rad underscore unit here. This field contains the respective buffer distances along with the unit. Inside the tool, instead of linear unit here, we will choose field and then we will choose rad underscore unit as our field. Everything will remain same. As you can see, each point has variable buffer here. Finally, we will discuss how to use the multiple ring buffer tool. Here we will be using this polygon as the input and we will use 500 and 800 meter buffer distances and everything else will remain the same. In our output, you can see that the tool has created a donut shaped buffer polygon and it has actually created two separate polygons. One is located at 500 meter distance and the other one, this blue one, is located at 800 meter distance. To recap, in this video, we discussed what is buffer and how it is used in different ways in ArcGIS Pro. I think this is a great stopping point. This has been Tesselbytes where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.